Hi everyone, Brett back out to scale modeling with no spur review. This is actually take two on this one. For some reason the camera didn't record right the first time. So anyway, it's Hobby Boss M1070 gun truck. It's not an entirely new tooling, but it does have new parts. This part's actually from a 2011 tooling that was the truck with the trailer that hauled the tank. But most of the rest of the stuff back here, the gun, some of the internal parts are all new tooling. Let's get inside the kit. Beautifully detailed cab, gun turret placements, suspension, framing, five sheets of photo etch, you can do a camouflage pattern. It looks kind of like that. So there you have it. So let's get in to what we got. And we are starting with this bag that had these two parts in it. This is part, let's get zoomed in here. This is the part of the gun turret area. You'll have some canvas covers on the side of it. I think they're canvas. But there you go. It's a nice square piece of plastic, not too thick. That everything's going to attach to. This <clears throat> that was in there too is the hood. Hood looks a little crooked, as you can see, but when you put all parts on it, it should straighten out okay. It's got nice riveting on it. And up here in the front, it says Oshkosh. My gosh. But yeah, once you get everything glued in place, let's just straighten that out. If not, just a little warm water, hot water. Get it all straightened out. Alright. Let's start checking on some of the big sprues. Here we've got sides of the cab, the doors, looks like a generator box, the back of the cab, the floor. Very nice detailed rivets, nuts and bolts for the armor plating, for the bottom, the top, the doors. floor looks nice and smooth. On the back, no ejector pin marks here, so you're obviously going to see some of that. These do have ejector pin marks, but here, inside the doors, so you got door pockets, window cranks, door handles, framing, but no ejector pin marks on those either. Nicely done. And here we've got what looks to me to be canvas siding with rivets holding it together in the top and the back. So I'm guessing two sides in the back or the front. The floor for the gun compartment area. Some parts for the guns. Looks like a belt with shells in it. Some of the main breeches for the guns. So that is going to take a wash nicely. When you get done, that could look like real textured fabric. I keep saying canvas. It might not be canvas. It might be some bulletproof fabric of some sort. I bet Google would tell us. Like I say, gun parts, shells, other parts, more gun parts, shells right there. <clears throat> Even though you're not going to see it, there are no ejector pin marks on the back side of those canvas panels. This diamond plating. Both sides. Again, you can wash and weather that nicely. All the small delicate parts. Hobby Boss does definitely do a good job with their detailing and the quality of their plastic. Here we've got the frame rails for the 
truck itself. And looks like fuel tanks, maybe some hydraulic tanks, instrument panel. First of all, they look very straight. They don't look like they're warped at all. Yes, the inside has plenty of ejector pin marks. But the outside is great nut and bolt detail. Whole length of it is some nice detail. Same with this pan here. Bolts all around it. The tanks. Gears. I'm assuming that's probably transmission. There's the instrument panel. There may be decals in it, I'm not sure yet. But it's got nice raised detail. Alright. And we are moving on to this one. It's got some foam wrapping on it to protect this delicate framing here. I'm not sure what it's for, but it's very fine. Be very careful cutting off the sprue. Looks like transmission housing. Or it could just be the bottom half of the engine. Another tank. Windshield framing. On this side, no ejector pin marks. So whatever these are, looks like parts of a box or something, but there's no ejector pin marks on either side of those. So I'm going to wrap this back up. And put it back in here to protect that. This one also has a little bit of foam around it. Take that off. It's for one of the main guns. Some more diamond plating. Guns with outstanding detail and hollowed out barrels for all these four gun tips. And this looks like parts sides of a big box. Got some venting there. I'm wondering if this is maybe the Headlight grill guard for the front. But I do like the detail in that gun. Very nice. So I'm going to wrap that back up too. And get it right back in this bag. And here, looks like we got fenders. Framing parts, steering wheel, very delicate tie rod. Looks like the front and top of the radiator with the radiator cap and the bolts. I could be wrong. Whatever this is, it's got a really good bolt to tail on both sides. And lots of small parts. <clears throat> I don't believe this has an engine, but fenders have a nice detail all the way around and no ejector pin marks on the inside and almost looks like. These were slide molded. Maybe not because of the way they are, but they did mold them without ejector pin marks on the inside. Here's what I'm talking about, that very delicate tie rod. Steering wheel. There's the, I think it's the top of the radiator. That might be the bottom of the radiator. You can see that bolt detail around both sides. Looking good. And this is matching sprues. Let me get one of them out of here. Four sprue K. There's two of them. 
you can see some good bolt pattern detail there. These look like mirrors or spotlights. So you just put some chrome finish or Maltol or something there to make them reflective. Some more small parts. Some more tanks. Some more bracing for the suspension. There's another very delicate part right here. Leaf spring. Might have a slight burr line on it. And then a couple swipes with a sander we'll take care of. The flip side. Backs of the mirrors and spotlight look pretty good. So like I said, two of these matching. Here we have another two more matching. This is J. <clears throat> Looks like more wheel parts. And there's more suspension parts. I'm not sure what these are. These, I think they're tanks of some sort, but they are, see, slide molded, hollowed out nicely, whatever they're for. Some more really delicate parts right here. Be careful, use your best snippers to take them off. This panel here also has diamond plating, as you can see. So, two J's. Um, H has four matching screws, as you can see, for the wheels. Lug nuts, bolts, U joints, insides of the wheels. So, four of this sprue. Makes sense because of a large number of tires on it. And this. Uh, one by itself, yep. Looks like more suspension parts, more transmission parts, differentials, some more U joints, some drive shafts, thundering outside. Not sure what this is, but it looks really good. The detail is just really nice all the way around up and on everything. Here in, so you got one side differentials there. Flip it over, you got the other side with the cooling vents and And this one has some of the same parts, but not all of them. This one has the fifth wheel part on it. Some of the other detail parts for the framing. Looks like some suspension parts and the drive line or axle. Again, this part. Fifth wheel looks very nice. Small parts are done very well. Good bolt detail on those. Flip it over. Got our ejector pin marks here, but they're going to glue up against the frame rail, so you don't have to worry about it. There's also a couple here in the bottom of the fifth wheel, which I don't think you'll see. Lots and lots of parts in this kit. Here. This 
came off the sprue. Sprue gate. It's a cover for something, you can see. Good detail on it. And then this looks like it has the exhaust stack. And the exhaust hoses and some other framing parts. But the main exhaust stack slide molded and hollowed out. And then there's a flexible tubing right there. These pipes are all one piece. And yes, as you can see with this one, there is a burr line there you have to clean up. That's where the two mold halves came together. They weren't as perfect as we thought they were. Let's see, we're almost out of parts here. We got one more bag of colored sprue. These two are matching. And this one is sprue R. Some more diamond plating there, some texture there. These look like the gun rings. Like some more ammo belts. So, there's your diamond plating. Want to look to me like ammo belts and then your turret rings. Not sure what the rest of these parts are for. They are molded very nicely. Uh, whatever this one's for, there's no ejector pin marks on it on the inside, on the, the inside of this one, or the back side of those two. So, like I said, two of those. Screw R. Um, tires. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tires, so I'm assuming there's a spare. <clears throat> there does look like to be a seam line. And these do say Michelin. And they do have a tire size on it. I don't know if I can see that, but Michelin. Tire size, and then Great tread pattern, but like I said, there is a slight seam line, but you're going to scuff your tires anyway. So, nine rubber, soft rubber tires, hollow. I'm assuming they're rubber, they may not be. I'm going to take these out, flat, clear pieces for the windshield and the side windows. They're going to be perfect, they're flat. Probably the most incompetent of companies can screw up flat ones. And these are for all the clearance lights, the headlights, everything else. Look like a couple siren lights. Okay. This bag here has these rubber things in it that I th look to me like air caps for car tires. Going out. We'll have to see what the instructions say they are. They're not hollow. They're kind of flexible. They have a ridged pattern to them. So, we will find out what these are when we look at the instructions. There are six of those. Okay, dropping stuff on the floor. So, here's two PE sheets. It's got vents, grilling, foldable parts. And then this one, same thing, some vents, some grilling, some foldable parts. They are covered in plastic, I can see that. 
Here's two more. These ones are matching. This bag we're going to open because these look different. These are the ones I want to look at because they are curved slightly, hopefully on purpose, because they look like they have the right same amount of curve in them all the way around. I'm guessing they're shields, plating or something. And then this one looks like your front grill and some armor flooring maybe. Alright, these back carefully. I hate it when my photo edge gets bit. Unless it's supposed to be bit. Come on. Go tape. This one, like I said, I think it's supposed to be bit. All right, put all that safely away. In here, we've got some string. I'm not going to open this because there's tiny pins in there. There's a little piece of copper wire. There's some string. There's some black hosing. There's a honestly that looks like a very small. Allen wrench. I doubt that's what it is, but that's what it looks like. And some more metal parts. And this actually has window masks and decals. So We do have decals for the instrument panel, and it looks like we have decals for lots of the equipment. And we've got die cut masks. Yep. Except it feels textured. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe it's not masks. Let's find out in a minute. Because we're down to the instructions. Alright. This came with an advertisement for the exact one. Ah, oh, see? Those black things that I thought were valve cover stems. Not valve cover stems. Air, yeah, valve stems, covers. They're like airbags for the suspension. That's so cool. See, I put them in there. So like realistic airbags. Nice. There's your spare. This side is apparently there's a new Corsair they brought out, and a Canadian Leopard. And this big fat instruction book. A little bit about safety and precautions, color call out, sprue map, numbered, same there, and then the different size tacks, different size brass wire, metal piece, brackets, rope, die cut masks, and you're going to start with the frame. Which usually on something this big you do start with. So you gotta do all these on the outside. And these go bring the frame together. Uh, transmission gears, bottom of the engine, various parts, these you have to put together before you put it on there. 
<clears throat> more parts for the frame. I don't know if any of this needs painted, if it's going to be a different color besides weathered. It's probably all going to be... This looks black. And then axles. And more axles. And there's those airbags that that is such a neat little touch they put on there. So that is impressive. I don't know if that's been on any before, but none I've seen. So your leaf springs, more parts to your suspension, again more parts to your suspension, more airbags. The suspension just keeps on going, more airbags. Your front suspension, the back. So the front suspension has the leaf springs. So that's like this here, this here, the front suspension, and then the leaf springs and everything. And all the rest of it's rear suspension. Shock absorbers. Some more of the drive lines. All those parts I would show you, those are holding for the fuel tanks. Possibly the air tanks for the braking and such. Your radiator, which I was right top and bottom of the radiator. Horns, like a train horn, keep people out of your way. Some of the boxes and steps and storage and the fifth wheel parts. Just building up the suspension is a lot of work. So there's where some of your metal pieces go. You're doing the fenders and there's the P there for the mud flaps. There's your interior, your instrument panel, your steering wheel, there's your decals all going on it that you definitely want to paint before you do that. It says medium gray green, no cement on the tow hooks. Your seats. So you've got a bench seat and you've got two other main front seats. And your armor plating for the hole around the cab. Spotlights, I talked about. It says repair something. Decals for you inside the doors. Glass. Still telling you flat black for some parts. <clears throat> your die cut masks go in certain areas. Okay, and you're putting your sides on your cab, attach it to the floor. Looks like you've got some grab handles maybe. Windshield, the bottom of the cab. Your bending something, it's PE, so you have to bend it to get it that shape. More PE. This is for scale, but you want to do that one part. I think it's got a visor over the front. There's the exhaust we were talking about. And mufflers. Mirrors. I wouldn't put the mirrors on until after it was painted. I wouldn't put the wood tires and wheels on until after it was painted, but there they go together. Then there's P's going on there. Is that going to have to straighten out that little bend? Maybe not, but maybe that will. Or maybe just putting it on there will. Bend some more PE there for some brackets. You've got the protectant around the exhaust, the burn shield. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's where your rope goes. 
It's more PE. Or goes over your winch. And you just keep building up and building up and it just doesn't stop. There's that one part that was off the sprue. So it looks like part of a generator or a control box. Step 28. These are all control boxes to the gun part. And here's this part finished. Still putting decals on there. Still putting PE in certain places. Your exhaust pipe and your shroud protecting it. More PE for the steps and the walkways. Both sides get that. Some of these delicate parts I'd leave off till it was painted. Ah, PE mud flaps. That might be those bent ones. Front bumper, tow hooks. Don't say anything about do not summoning them this time. Then you work on your gun compartment. Which that looks to be... That's not the grill guard like I thought. It looks a you know, storage unit for the magazines maybe. And there's a diamond plating. Looks like the bottom. So it's shelving and stuff inside. There's a little bit of detail inside. Compared to the beginning of the instructions, easy. Really easy. So yes, you can see inside some of the stuff. So those are storage racking. You're putting your canvas parts on the side, or fabric, or whatever they are. You're putting your guns together with your magazines and the shells, the belts. There's the armor for the behind the gunner. Two rings all going together. The other gun for the other side, different kind of gun. Hence a different kind of barrels. Both turrets in. And one little last piece of metal, PE, and you're done. 40 steps. <clears throat> There's a scheme. Looks like your typical NATO scheme to me. There's some color callouts. That's it, one scheme. All right, there you have it. The M 1070 gun truck from Hobby Boss. Bunch of new parts, new variant. Looks like a lot of interesting building and a lot of fun. Look, some QR codes. Do those work if I put them on camera? I don't know. Thanks for watching. Sit your ass to the bench for many, many weeks to build this kit. Bye for now.